I'm Debbie Birch and I'm with the Queen Anne's County Office of Tourism and we're here today to talk about a, a site in the county that's been here forever it seems like. It's the Y Grist Mill and I have George Huffman with me. He's with the friends of the old Y Grist Mill. Did I say that right? Correct. Um, and he's going to tell us a little bit about the history of the mill. Um, it is open for tours so um, I suggest going out if you've never been. It's I, I went this year and spent some time there. We had a, a cruise in there, a poker run, and right. it was fascinating to see how it works and everything. So can you tell us a little bit about the history? Sure, Debbie. Uh, it still amazes me the number of people that I run into who are natives of this area and don't know about don't know. the Y Grist Mill. The Y Grist Mill is really a gem, an historic gem, I think, in my opinion, the historic gem of the whole state of Maryland. Mm -hmm. It is the oldest industrial site in the state. Wow. It is the oldest continuously operated mill in the entire country. See, and people don't realize it's right here. Exactly. Uh, the mill was founded there in Y Mills, and uh, actually it wasn't Y Mills when the mill was founded. That's the name of the town derived from the mill. From the mill, okay. In 1682, 333 years ago. Holy moly. I tell uh, the school kids <laughs> that come in uh, who don't can't picture 333 years, I said that was before even George Washington's father was born. Oh, gee. Uh, shortly after the initial settlement in Maryland in the 1830s. Mm -hmm. The mill has several significant places in history. One is that during the Revolutionary War, George Washington had a great deal of trouble getting food for his troops. The Eastern Shore at that time was the breadbasket of the entire country. 70% okay. of the grain grown in the country was grown on the Eastern Shore during that period. Unfortunately for George Washington, it was grown by huge plantations, 40, 50,000 acre plantations, that the men got from the king oh, of England. Geez. They were not for the revolution. <laughs> they were obviously Tories. They either refused to sell to George Washington and his army or jack the prices up. So Washington knew that the man that owned the mill at that time, a man named William Hemsley, was also colonel of the Maryland militia. Ah, he okay. wrote him, and we have copies of some of their correspondence. Washington explained his problem. Hemsley wrote back and said, if you can get me the money to buy grain, I'll turn the entire output of my mill over to the army. For the army, And wow. for somewhere around the last three years of the war, everything that went out of that mill went to feed the Revolutionary Army. Wow. Another significant place in history is that a little known man named Oliver Evans in 1792 got U.S. patent number three on how to automate three. a grist mill. <laughs> Signed by Thomas Jefferson. Get out of here. Thomas was a scientist and he made himself the head of the patent bureau. Uh, that patent was on how to automate a grist mill. And the History Channel did a story on him several years ago, crediting him with being the founder of the American Industrial Revolution. Because really? his invention improved the efficiency of grist mills by about 800%. And includes- That's a little in, bit. <laughs> indeed. And, uh, it quickly caught on all around the world. Among the first patentees that he granted were Washington and Jefferson. Really? And the significance with the Y Mill there is that Oliver Lev Evans at that time lived only about five miles from the mill and his brother worked at the mill. So they had it so right there to we, experiment on. We don't have any absolute proof, but we think that that mill was probably where Oliver worked out right. his ideas for his inventions. Wow, and and this is right here. It's right behind. Uh, if you go down the road next to Chesapeake College, because some people might not even know where it is. That's right. It's really in quote unquote downtown Y Mill. Exactly. But many people drive by it. Local people. I've met people who live in the town who say, "I've never stopped in here." Yep. Well, so you are open for tours, and um, you do have a website. It's the old oldymill.org. Old mill. Okay. And you do, you're open on weekends? We're open uh, from the 1st of May until the 1st of November. Okay. We're open seven days a week. Okay. And our hours are 10 to 4. All right. We actually do grinding on every 1st and 3rd Saturday. Okay. So people can come and watch it really operating. I mean, it's it's operating, but they can see somebody they actually. They can see how, how it was ground. It actually was, has been done for centuries. Oh, that's wonderful. And we wonderful. still operate with the equipment as it has evolved through the centuries in that building. In, in, uh, we do corn, we do wheat, we do barley, we do grits. 
And you sell stuff too. And we sell and you the sell flour. the, the right. stuff ground there. So exactly. Um, well, thank you so much for coming in and giving us some information. Again, it's the oldwymill.org. Okay, is the website? Go on there and you can visit and read up on some of the history. And we appreciate you coming in. It's wonderful. Thank you. You're and welcome. We invite everybody to come and see it. Thanks.